Welcome to the Persuasion Pitch Podcast. I'm your host, Jess, licensed esthetician, makeup artist, and anti-MLM advocate. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm really excited to sit down with Tracy Conan. She is a CPA, but she's also a CFF. That it means that she is certified in financial forensics. She is a fraud investigator and a forensic accountant with Sequence Inc. She investigates embezzlement, financial statement fraud, securities fraud, Ponzi schemes, divorce, white collar criminal defense, insurance fraud, and civil litigation matters. All right, I am sitting down right now with the one and the only Tracy, and I am so appreciative that she came on to my show. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me today. I'm excited to be here. No problem. So, okay. When I started researching MLMs, I came across your name quite a bit. And I know that you run the tr- the Pink Truth website. And that is a huge resource for, for people, not just people in, you know, in Mary Kay, but like their loved ones, their, you know, their family, their friends. And it's used as such a, you know, a great resource, but you also look like you're completely anti-MLM let's just put that out there so if there's an article by you I know that you are coming to it from an anti-MLM standpoint no excuses ever for anyone to ever be involved in any MLM they're predatory they're terrible and I don't even care when someone says but I really like the products and this one has a really great product I don't care you purchasing that product from that MLM supports an abusive system that takes billions of dollars from people so no there's there's a different product out there that you could find that's not MLM absolutely I agree I am so anti-MLM that I will not even allow an MLM product in my house. Like, I don't care if it's a sample. Like, I do not want it. Um, I don't care if they, they're giving it to me for free to try. I will not support it. And I say this all the time, just because I don't support what you are doing in an MLM doesn't mean I don't support you as a person. I just, I cannot, I cannot do it in good conscience support such a predatory business model and i mean the products are overpriced anyway because you have to pay people cuts up the pyramid and they're normally crap quality so yeah i wouldn't absolutely nothing to do with it there is there is nothing that special about any mlm product Um, you can get anything that they're selling out on the open market through normal distribution channels and find something just as good quality, probably better quality. Right. And I mean, it's not even about the product and that just goes to show, you know, and I touched on this in my podcast before, I I can tell you, it's definitely not about the product because, you know, they don't care what they're putting into it. If you look at Monet, their hair and stuff, you look at unique, I mean, their makeup is crap and that's coming from a licensed esthetician and makeup artist. And they found out that there was ground up nylon in their mascara instead of their green tea fibers. You know, so it's like, it's not about the product at all, at all. It's about the recruitment. Correct. It's never about the product. I always say the product is the front for the pyramid scheme. Yeah. So um, the companies are focused on recruiting people into an opportunity. And that opportunity truly is the opportunity to recruit more people to an opportunity. But if they didn't have a product, they would be labeled truly a pyramid scheme by any law enforcement agency in the US. And we can't have that. So we have to have a product. We have to have a legit looking product and there has to be a hook to the product. So it's a fancy mascara, you know, it's, it's special vitamins some magic potion that solves all your medical ailments. There has to be a hook to the product. It has to feel unique, but that product is there for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to make the scam appear legitimate. Absolutely. Absolutely. We think just like <laughs> that is so right because I mean, in even the, even companies with a product, 
they have still been deemed illegal pyramid schemes. So just because they have a product doesn't mean that they're not operating as an illegal pyramid scheme at all. Uh, there's, I have actually, I have a list in, in the notes of my phone when a company shuts down, they had that had a product. Like I keep a list of all the MLMs that have been shut down. And I'm just like, oh, I just want to add more to that list. It's like an like obsessive thing. But yeah, so just because they have a product does not mean that it is legitimate at all. And I just want to stress that so much to my listeners. And if you like, let's look at Herbalife. I mean, it's huge. You know, that is, it is a pyramid scheme. It is a pyramid scheme. And I mean, because of, I mean, if we wanted to dig in deeper to it, which I'm, I really didn't plan on doing that today, but there it's, if you really look into it, it's not just about a shake. Like there are people who are being paid off and they are still in operation and they shouldn't be. So it goes so much deeper than what people think if they would just research. Well, Mary Kay has been around for more than 55 years. And the thing that they enjoy is a very positive reputation and the assumption that because they've been around so long that they must be a legitimate company or they would have been shut down. And everyone thinks of the little old lady, Mary Kay, who just wanted to help women. And I think it's possible that in the beginning, she did want to help women and she did want to have a product selling company. But at some point, very early on in the process, she started to realize how this MLM thing worked and how much more money she could make for herself if people were doing things like front loading inventory, getting people to buy these inventory packages up front and such. Mary Kay as a company spends an awful lot of time talking about product sales and making it appear as though there is a ton of product being put into the hands of consumers. And the truth is that there's a ton of product being ordered by consultants and sitting in their basements and sitting in their garages and ending up in landfills and donated to homeless shelters and things like that. There's a lot of volume uh, being purchased by consultants, but if you were to dig into how much is actually being sold to third-party consumers, actual customers, you'd find it's a really low number. Right. And it's funny that you even say that because uh, something came to mind. My dad, he's retired law enforcement, but he actually pulled over the real Mary Kay years ago. And I think it's so funny looking back on it now (laughs) because I can like say that. But yeah, he pulled her over on the interstate and she said, do you know who I am? And he's like, I have no idea who you are. No, I don't. He really did not know, but yeah, so I think that is so funny. And I also did an episode, a bonus episode on this podcast because my local news station did an article on like four local women getting a pink Cadillac and I was livid. I'm like, this is my local news station. Why are you sitting here and doing an article and making this look like a legitimate opportunity it was crazy. I mean, I there were so many anti-MLM advocates in the comments on that Facebook post of the article. I'm surprised that they did not take it down. They were like, why are you doing this? this is it a slow day at the news? Like, this is predatory. Like, I was really proud of that. Like, really proud of that. It's so awesome because that you did that. Um, the What people don't understand about these pink Cadillacs is that, first of all, there's all sorts of misinformation that's given out at the time that they're making these news releases and such. They're talking about the pink Cadillac was earned by this woman because her team sold X dollars of product. It's not true. They didn't sell that product. They ordered it. They paid for it. They ordered it at wholesale. And now we're doubling the wholesale number to make a suggested retail number and saying that was sold. None of those products had to have been sold in order for this woman to get into a Cadillac. But what's even funnier maybe is that most of the women who are driving pink Cadillacs are making $40,000 or less every year from their Mary Kay venture. So, I mean, the pink Cadillac is seen as this symbol of success, Uh, but the truth is that those folks for the most part aren't even making much money anyway. They're, They're allegedly making this executive income, but it's just not there. Yeah. And you know, a lot, okay. So most of these MLMs, when they get the car, 
you know, the lease is in the distributor's name. And if they don't meet, meet their bonus every month, the distributor has to pay that, you know, that, that car note. And so it's in the distributor's name. They're responsible for the payment all while plastering the company logo on the car. So, but I looked into the Mary Kay cars and it was a little bit different. It's like one woman said, this is her fourth car. So <laughs> could you explain a little bit how their car program works? It's it's a similar concept. The, the car is... Uh, in Mary Kay's name, okay. it is given to the consultant or sales director to use for two years, but they sign a contract. And if they don't keep up their production, they have to pay something every month called a copay, which is essentially them paying that, paying what would effectively be a lease, right? Yeah. And then that payment comes directly out of their commission check. And so what's funny is, if you're in that pink Cadillac, your copay, I believe, could be $900 a month if you totally blow it on your numbers. So not only are you getting a tiny commission check because you blew it and didn't have enough people order stuff, that commission check is being swallowed up by Mary Kay to pay for that car of yours. It's honestly a really bad deal for the consultants and directors. Um, but of course, if you say that to them, they say, well, well, no company is going to give you a company car unless you're meeting your sales goals and things. And this is no different. Yeah. Besides they, it makes people think, oh, they gave you a car. You earned a car. Like this is your car to keep. It's paid off. It's your car, but it does not work like that. There is no such thing as a free car they're not just going to give you a car it just doesn't work that way um so the pink cadillac was the most brilliant marketing tactic ever because it is iconic and it is associated with mary Kay, and it does um do a certain amount of advertising really at no cost to mary Kay inc it, it, it really doesn't cost them anything because they're right. pushing these production uh figures that Quite frankly, you know, there are consultants and directors who will order products that they don't need thousands of dollars of products on their own credit cards just so that they can meet these goals and and not have to do the copay or or e even worse. I mean, they'll do this to get themselves into that pink Cadillac because they've been told once you're in that Cadillac, the marketing value of it is going to help you recruit people and you're just going to start making a whole lot more money. So if you have to order $5,000 worth of inventory just to finish qualifying for that Cadillac, it's totally worth it in the long run. Um, and we see, you know, um, in the recent past, a couple of the younger directors that I've sort of been following and talking about on Pink Truth, uh, that they bought their way into their Cadillacs. One of them has, uh, you know, continued to have some, some success in Mary Kay in terms of recruiting a bunch of women and things like that. The other one just quit and sent her Cadillac back because her numbers were so poor and she just couldn't sustain putting all these product orders on her own credit card anymore. Yeah. And the thing with those products is they expire. <laughs> Right. So you have like all of these products and they expire. And it reminds me a lot of like that on Becoming a God in Central Florida, um, that that series they did on Showtime, how like the garages are just packed with product. So <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. Well, and what we see from these two young directors that we've been talking about on Pink Truth is that they keep running these sales for their customers, 50% off, buy one, get one free. And so they're heavily discounting these products to get rid of them because they've ordered so much and they've yeah. got to try to recover their money somehow. Inventory loading. Right. Yeah. But then, you know, they're, they're posting pictures on social media saying, oh, look, I mailed out 30 packages today to customers. I'm selling so much and I'm making so much money. Make it till no. you make it. Right. But you've actually lost money on those product sales right. because you've discounted it so much. Um, it's all so insidious. The lies are insidious and the pervasiveness and these women tell themselves they're not really lying. Well, I really did sell those products and I'm giving a false impression that I'm making profits, but it doesn't matter because and fill in the blank. They convince themselves it's okay to lie. Right. And I just saw um, recently Truth in Advertising did um, another article on Mary Kay and a YouTube video on it 
And I, so whenever people make all of these false claims, it is so, I cannot stress enough how important it is to report this to the FTC and to truth and advertising. And side note, truth and advertising does take screenshots. If they remove their posts, screenshot the false claim and then send them the image. <laughs> and yeah, so I cannot stress that enough. And I'm very grateful for for truth and advertising and for the work that they do. Um, and Mary Kay is one of the companies that does not provide an income disclosure statement. And I know it's not required by law, but I mean, I've seen a lot of um, IVS from other companies, but Mary Kay is one of those that they do not provide an IVS. Right. They do an income disclosure statement for Canada only because of Canadian laws. Um, but here's the thing about these income disclosure statements. I think that companies put them out because they have received certain pressure to do so. But at the end of the day, the documents are nearly worthless because of what they don't tell you, because of the things that they include or don't include. So for example, a lot of these income disclosure statements will exclude everyone over the last year who's like fallen out of the company, who right, came in and active. then left. If they included all those folks, the numbers would be even more pathetic than they already are. So these they already are bad. horrible. They're horrible already. Right, right. <laughs> and so, and, you know, they can make up their own way of calculating these numbers and they never really fully explain what the numbers are. So I always tell people, you know, we can learn something from these, but they're not, uh, they're not, they don't tell the whole story about it. And if they did tell the whole story, I bet the numbers would be much, much worse. Right. Right. I think that it should be like a law that they provided, but they should also have to explain how they are calculating this stuff. That, that's what I think, um, just to warn others about it. So you as an accountant, like what have, have you seen, um, have you seen like, seen like a lot of people lose like tons of money with these companies? Sure. All the time. You know, um, if you go back into Robert Fitzpatrick's research and Robert is, um, you know, started Pyramid Scheme Alert, still mm -hmm. runs it, as you know, recently wrote a book called Ponzi-nomics. Right, Robert now. is like the gold standard in the anti-MLM industry when it yes. comes to research and numbers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he did some research. Oh, gosh, I think it was probably like 15 years ago. Um, looking into income disclosure statements and other data that these companies released and ended up determining that 99% of people who get involved in MLM actually lose money. Right. And I can't tell you how many people I've talked to who have lost money. And even those who have not lost money, the amount that they've earned has been so little. So for example, Mary Kay sales directors, um, most of them, the vast majority earn about minimum wage for what they do. And it's so, so sad. It is sad, especially since they're putting this luxurious lifestyle online. <laughs> well, and they've got families who are counting on them to bring in income. They're sacrificing all of this time away from their families. By the way, when they've been told, this is your opportunity to be at home with your children. You can be a, you can be a more involved mom if you join an MLM versus going to work. Um, but it's not no. true. No, they no, end no, up no, spending no. 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week out trolling for new victims for their pyramid scheme. Yep. And then they're making minimum wage. So they're not even supporting their families well. They might even be most likely building up credit card debt. And at some point, the house of cards falls down. Right. But we can't talk about them. You're going to get shunned and people are going to act like you never existed once you leave the MLM. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, it is like, okay, there's that small percentage you can make it to the top. But if you don't, which you're most likely not going to, you, if you don't make it, you did not work hard enough. Mm -hmm. And they tell you it's easy, you can spend more time with your kids you know, you can make money in your sleep, but, but whenever you don't make it, it's because you did not work hard enough. So it's like, 
you know. You didn't work it the Mary Kay way. Right. And also, I, I always like to remind people, okay, the, those who got to the top in Mary Kay or any MLM, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of people. Oh, but they, but they did it and they proved that it's possible. Guess what? The only reason they're there is because thousands of people under them lost money, mm -hmm. lost anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. Do you really want to quote, make money based on wrecking thousands of people's financial situations? I don't want to. It's unethical. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. And I say that all the time. I'm like, if you do make it to the top, you're making the money off the ones losing the money. It's, it's unethical. Like, it's just not right. You know, and I personally couldn't do it. Like, I mean, if you have morals, <laughs> I mean, you have to know what's going on. If you're at the tippy top, you just have to know what's going on. I've got to tell you, these people at the tops of the pyramid, they've got some sales skills. They have got some massive sales skills. Why not go out and get a legit job with a legit company with in a sales type of position? You could make a boatload of money in a legitimate way. All right. And they, but you know, they, they want this. You know what I think is like from like a psychological thing is they, like the feeling of having um, a close knit circle, like oh, those are my girls. Those are those are my we're people. Doing life together. Yeah, like we're you know like they they like that sense of belonging and that circle of friends. And I I think maybe that has something to do with it. Well, we uh, talk on Pink Truth about a woman. Um, who was a pretty high up director, Mary Kay, and left last year or the year before, uh, within the last few years, she left and, and she's become, you know, a life coach, business coach type of person as so many of them do. And there's a whole problem with that. So that aside, many, oh, that's a whole other can of worms. That, that aside for a second, she oh. has over the last year, occasionally on her social media accounts, talked about basically how all of her, her Mary Kay girlfriends dropped her once she left. She hasn't uh, said it in as strong a language as I'm using, but she said it's strong enough that you know what she's saying. You know exactly what she's saying. And so she, it was her girlfriends and friends for life and all this kind of stuff it's until she you. decided Mary Kay wasn't for her anymore. And she's talked about how Mary Kay almost ruined her marriage, um, how she was felt all of these pressures to put forth an image that wasn't true and things like that. And once she finally said, guys, I can't do this anymore. I've got, to, I've got to do something else with my life. They all acted as though she doesn't exist anymore. All right. It's that. That, that's the cult. It, it is 100% a cult. Absolutely. Yep. They use the same exact tactics as cults do. And there's just no convincing me otherwise. And I don't even say it's a cult. And I've said this before in a joking manner. Like it is 100% a cult. <laughs> and yes. I agree. I, people ask me if I'm joking around when I say that. I, I'm absolutely not. Right. Like I'm not joking. Like it is a cult. And with these Ponzi schemes or pyramid schemes, um, I guess we could just say pyramid schemes. You know, they're like, I'm sure that you see the pattern, like I see the pattern is people who are single moms, stay at home moms, military wives, um, you know, people who go online asking about extra income. These are the ones who are preyed upon. This is, this is like, oh yeah, this is the one I'm going to get. They want to stay at home with their kid but they're actually neglecting their child because they're spending. I, I, I talked to a girl that told me she was reaching out to 400 people a week, 400 people a week. When does it run out? You have to keep adding friends on Facebook or Instagram and then like adding people they know and they know and they know and they know like eventually you're going to run out of people to ask I mean I guess you won't if you keep going and going but there's only so many people in the world but 400 people a week yeah we've run the numbers on pink truth before about how many people you have to talk to a week in order to 
you know, get enough who say, yes, I'm going to have a party for you and then actually hold the party and then actually have three or four people there and then actually listen to your recruiting spiel and then sign up. Like, you know, because you have to start out talking to like a couple hundred people a week, at least to have any chance. The numbers are astronomical. It's gross. Right. So that's not spending more time with your children. No, it's not. And, and, you know, the kinds of people that you uh, just mentioned are vulnerable people. That's who they look for when they're recruiting for MLMs is vulnerable people. Um, so many gross. of them who are in financial situations um, that need improvement um, or who have self-esteem issues or who are stay-at-home moms who need an outlet for um, doing something other than being around their kids or uh, people who are overweight and looking for a solution to that. Everyone who gets involved for the most part has some sort of vulnerability that's going to be exploited. Absolutely, absolutely. It is it is really disgusting. <laughs> it's really disgusting and scary. Uh, so do you feel like I do that there should be some type of law in place where they not only provide the income disclosure statements, but also let everyone know how they, how they are calculating these numbers. Do you think that would even help? I don't think that laws help in this industry uh, because these companies are consistently finding ways to get around whatever the laws are or make things appear to comply and things like that. And so uh, my preference would be that the industry be eliminated completely. I mean, for goodness sakes, there are lawyers, like there's a guy who calls himself the MLM lawyer and his entire job is knowing how to weasel around whatever laws or requirements there are in your state or in the United States, et cetera. Um, so more laws, they're just going to find ways to weasel right. out of them. The loophole. Mm -hmm. They are going to find a loophole. That's a shame. And it's uh, what, one thing I noticed recently was a couple of Huns, well, MLM reps, if people don't know what that is, they were posting and they were with It Works they were posting the income disclosure statement along with the before and after photo. And it literally says like the average is like $1 or something like that, but they were posting it along with it. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's like a new requirement or, but like they see it. I know they see it. They posted it. So I, I don't know. Maybe they're like, Oh, maybe I have a chance to get to the top, but like, it's mind blowing to me. Like it's, it's, these companies are so disgusting, so predatory. And I just encourage everyone to research, 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 please research. <laughs> I always like to say, if you're thinking about signing up for Mary Kay, I don't understand how you could possibly, first of all, not do any research. But second of all, assuming you do research and you come visit Pink Truth and you take some time to read, I can't understand why you would still sign an agreement and become a consultant. Right. Of course, people do it. People do it. So, you know, when I started Pink Truth 15 years ago, um, I started it, we called it, I called it Mary Kay Sucks and did that for, I don't know, three, four, five months and then decided that I needed to change the name just so Mary Kay uh, wouldn't come after me for squatting on their trademark or anything like that. And so we right. changed to Pink Truth. And we started out in the very beginning, it really was just something fun to do to gossip about Mary Kay and some people Mary Kay. And the site got really popular really fast. And I felt kind of a responsibility to do something with that. And that's when I decided that what I wanted to do was educate people. So that if you were a person who was thinking about signing up for Mary Kate and you did take that time to research on the internet, that you would find the site and you would have resources there available to you to tell you the other story. And if after seeing that you still decided to sign up, that's on you. Right. Right. And, you know, I have to say that in that article that the local news station did, so many people were putting treat pink truth the website into the comments so i was really really proud of that 
and um i'm just gonna look up mary k mlm and like i feel like if you just google it <laughs> it'll come back and then all right so it comes up as when i put mary k mlm it comes mlm truth.org and then uh th there it is and then pinktruth.com so yeah <laughs> that's great but we uh, we rank well for a number of search terms search phrases related to mary Kay, and really? of course from the very beginning i have been conscious of that and i have you know worked on the organic seo behind the scenes to make sure that if you know that there are certain catchphrases in mary Kay that a potential recruit might hear and so I've made sure to include those phrases in articles and, and things like that so that, that people would be able to find the site easier. I love that. I love that. And this this website, I know, has helped so many people. It's helped family members. It's, it's helped reps that have left and it's prevented people from joining. So right. that is something to be Prevent so people proud from of. Joining. Like, help those who are already in figure out how they get out and get as much money back as possible, help the family and friends who have been affected by it, things like that. But make no, no mistake, we also have some fun. We still do the gossip thing. And, and you know, I, I do, um, when I find things on Instagram uh, from, you know, well-known sales directors and such, uh, when they put sketchy stuff on Instagram, I am happy to write about that on Pink Truth. I, you know, when they're doing false earnings claims, I love to highlight that. Oh when, yeah, for sure. I would too. Yeah. <laughs> when they're telling one story, but they've told another story previously, I love highlighting those things side by side. So you better believe I am doing screenshots of Instagram stuff all the time. And I have myself a little library. Of you stuff. guys, if you're listening and you are with Mary Kay, do not post false claims. You will be, like someone will screenshot that. I don't care if it's set to friends only. We will find a way to find that. I will help her find a way and we will blast you on. <laughs> right. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Um, I did hear that Mary Kay, they shut down in Australia and New Zealand. Is that right? That is I, true. I, yeah. Whenever I heard that, I did like a short YouTube video. Whenever I, I used to do, um, I had a YouTube channel for a while before I did the podcast. So, I mean, that's a win, right? I mean, I, I feel I like. I mean, yeah, anywhere they shut down is a win uh, for the future. Of course, it's devastating for those who are currently in in those areas and have money invested and all of a sudden the rug's being pulled out under from under them. And I certainly have compassion for them, but long-term, it is a win that that market is no longer operating. Now, let's just hope that the U.S. is next, but who knows? Who knows? Um, well, I do want to thank you so much. Okay, before, before we go, what, okay. No MLM is different from another. They're all the same. What are some red flags that people need to look out for when someone is telling them about this exciting business opportunity? Some of the things that I typically see are they're not willing to tell you the name of the company right off the bat. So we see this on social media all the time where these reps will not tell you what company- I'll DM you, hon. Right? DM me for details, right? Private message me if you want to know more. That is probably the biggest, most common red flag that I see. Um, when they're telling you that there's no risk involved, it's a lie. There's the, You're risking your money. You're going to lose your money. Um, those are probably the biggest things that you can look out for. Also, when they say, oh, you, you don't have to recruit. Oh, recruiting is not the thing. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. That's an absolute lie. Um, you know, all of them minimizing the time that you need to invest in this. When they're telling you things like we'll hear in Mary Kay all the time where you can have full-time pay for part-time hours. All of those sorts of claims that sound too good to be true should put consumers on notice. Right. Yeah, if it seems too good to be true, it's it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I truly do appreciate it, and I mean that. I have read everything that you have written, and 
I'm going to leave links in the description, the show description with, you know, the Pink Truth website and to your Facebook page. Everyone go like her Facebook page. She has a Facebook like page because she's amazing. And she is definitely a staple within the anti-MLM movement. So thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. It was fun talking to you. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.